a very unusual rocking egg made by, well, branded Unicom. I believe this came from a shop called Ryman's in the UK, which is a stationer, and it was donated to the channel by Vince, the crew chief, and the job, the tattoo. So uh, this uh, is basically, uh, well, you've seen that it, it's a, a self-balancing egg, it always comes up the way, but if you smack it, it goes on and off. It's got a vibration switch in it. And it also has a timer, so that if you just tap it and leave it on for a while, it will eventually go off. And it takes a few minutes before it does that. So let's take a look inside. So the this section comes off to reveal the battery holder. Let's uh, pop that out as well. I'm guessing that the base here is just going to be mostly aluminium. Or aluminium, if you prefer. Um with really just the bottom of this, uh, how does this come out? Oh, it twists out. Oh, the thing unscrews. Maybe I, maybe I should try that. Oh, maybe it doesn't unscrew. Maybe I'm just doing this all wrong. No, I think maybe I shouldn't have undone those screws. I think it does actually unscrew. Oh well, live and learn. So let's uh, get this out, and I'm guessing the batteries just make contact, because they seem quite loose. I'm guessing they just make contact with the aluminium base. Oh, it's actually got a spring in there. Oh, and it's got what looks like a, a steel insert to give it extra weight. Well, that's quite interesting. Oh, the whole lot comes out. Yes, it does. With a slightly misplaced rubber washer. Okay. Oh, that uh, comes out. Right, okay. So what about the battery holder just has... Oh, that does have to come off. Once it's, it, it doesn't unscrew to change the batteries, you do actually have to take that off. To access to, I'm guessing, CR2030? CR2030. The 2030, mean, uh, should say 2032, meaning 20 millimeters diameter and 3.2 millimeters thick. And these typically have a voltage of about 3 volts. So let's uh, get all that stuff out of the way and bring in the egg, which has a circuit board that looks as though it's been wedged in the bottom. I'm not sure if there's glue there as well. Uh, so there's the spring that made contact with the positive terminal. And underneath the reflector, or diffuser, should I say, is a circle of five LEDs, a uh, 8-pin chip. Does it have a number on it? No, it doesn't. It's that mysterious 8-pin chip that appears in so many things. These will be a multitude of chips. Um, you know, the, the, there'll be so many different uh, microcontrollers, and it probably is a microcontroller in that little 8-pin package. So let's see, the five LEDs, what looks like a diode, does this push out? Oh, yes, it does. Right, so they've got, uh, this is the negative are going around the outside, and they've got a bit of wire folded over the edge, that, so when it's wedged in, it will make connection. That's actually displaced, it's gone so hard that it's displaced some of the printed circuit board material. Right, let's get the notepad and reverse engineer this. It's not going to be terribly complicated, but it's worth doing anyway. So, notepad. And let's start off the batteries. So we've got the two lithium cells, which is going to give us about 6 volts. 6 volts. 2 times CR... Oop, CR2032. Um, and that's going to plus... And that's going to negative or 0 volts. Um... The positive goes straight to the LEDs, but then there's also what looks like a polarity protection diode. So let's uh, draw in the LEDs. There's one, two, three, four, five LEDs in parallel. Fairly common way of doing it. I wouldn't have thought that this unit puts out, given that it's just running off the lithium cells, I wouldn't have thought that uh, they really needed that number of LEDs. I wonder why they've used so many. So that's the LEDs. Then there's a diode feeding the rest of the circuitry, probably for the polarity protection, and its uh, number is S4. S4. Four. 
then there's a capacitor. Hold on, let's say uh, that then feeds. That what I guess is a microcontroller. And that's got a little capacitor across it. Just a decoupling capacitor. I don't think it'll have a... They don't usually have values printed on them. It's the, uh, this little component here. I don't know if you'll actually see that. But um, It's just across the power rails, and it's design, designed primarily so that if there's any sort of bad connection, it, it means that there's enough uh, res reserve charge in this capacitor to keep this mysterious microcontroller running without crashing or resetting. Um, the transistor that switches the LEDs through a resistor. Uh, the resistor is a value of 5R1, 5.1 ohms. 5R1 which means 5.1 ohms. Then it's got a transistor, which is a J3Y. J3Y, I think that's a standard NPN transistor. Although having said that, it's being, the base is being driven directly. I'll, I'll draw it as an NPN transistor and check afterwards. Uh, J3Y. Uh, but that's being driven directly from the chip there. There'd usually be a resistor in series. They may be relying on the... If it is, uh, if it was a MOSFET, that would be quite normal. But with an um, NPN transistor, there'd normally be a resistor in here, but there's not. They might be relying on the impedance of the pin. The switch is... Uh, looks like a... Hold on, is it rattling? I think it's a spring-based vibration switch. Inside this will probably look like a tube with a very fine spring inside and any vibration will make that touch the side of the tube and it's covered in the heat shrink or a plastic package yet. Yeah, it looks like a plastic package and heat shrink presumably just to um, protect it from shorting against anything else. So um, that is connected from one of the pins and interestingly, we've got another couple of pads. I wonder if that's for a capacitor to avoid very... Or maybe it's to actually make it more sensitive because that, that would shunt the capacitor and increase the sort of detection time. It means that perhaps the microcontroller in standby mode doesn't have to pull that input so often. It doesn't need to monitor it so much because the capacitor, if it had been fitted, would have held the... Uh, would have taken a while to charge up again. It would have just extended this pulse slightly. So we've got the little switch and I think the symbol for a vibration switch is a standard switch with a small weight attached, an inertia switch. And that is it. So, um, yes, the batteries feed the LEDs, but you're only switched on by when needed by this transistor. The microcontroller just has one input, uh, the vibration switch, and then the output to drive the transistor. So, very, very simple. It's quite neat. I can't really think of... Many uses, I suppose, handy as a decorative emergency light or, I suppose, as a novelty plaything. It's quite an odd little thing. Strange indeed.